Hey guys, so confession time. Since this is an emotional eating group, I gave in to emotional eating yesterday and it'd be really easy for me to tell no one because I stay at home. I have no um, people around to see what I'm doing. Brian has no idea what I buy because he has nothing to do with grocery shopping. He doesn't look and see what I've gotten and so it's really easy for me to hide things. And so, yesterday I bought these because we're going camping and we're gonna do s'mores. And if you see, there are not one, but two candy bars missing. Who ate those? Me. Brian doesn't even know that they exist. Um, yesterday, I've been suspecting for a while that Jack um, has been on the spectrum. For a little over a year now, I've been suspecting that. And so, we've gotten him into a program called Early On. And it helps with speech delay and um, like aggressive behavior, all the things that he needs help with. And <clears throat> his teachers have noticed signs of him possibly being on the spectrum. I've noticed them. Um, Brian has. And so we've just kept an eye on it. And he was just reevaluated because he's about to turn three and age out of the program. And so we had to be evaluated by the next step. Um, and so they've been telling me all along, like, we're keeping an eye on autism. And so I, I knew this. Like, I've seen the signs. I used to teach. I know this. And I, like, have not been sad about it because it's not a big deal. It's autism has um, benefits and pros. They're really smart. They're really focused. They're hardworking. They're driven. There's tons of pros. There are also cons. Um, they struggle with social things. Um, and so I haven't been sad at all about the prospect of him being on the spectrum until yesterday he went to his IEP and he qualified for this program that I've been pushing for for him because I know it can help him. Um, and so I sit through the, so it's been a year that I've been think like c suspecting and then I sit through this IEP which takes an hour. Um, and at the end of it, so they explain everything to me. And at the very end, I'm like, wait, so he's he's officially labeled now? And they were like, yeah. I mean, not in a rude way. I mean, they know that parents, it's a lot of information to take in. But I was just feeling dumb and slow. Like, they've been <laughs> explaining this to me, and I'm just now getting it. So at the end of the meeting, it just kind of hit me. Wow, he it's official. He's really labeled. Um... And that just made me really sad. And I was just down the rest of the day because I feel like my son has been put into this box. He's got this label. People are going to treat him differently. Um, I don't like that at all. And I look at him and I don't see anything wrong. Um, and there's nothing wrong. He's just struggles with certain things. But he's really good at other things, at just like any other kid. But I was really down, and I remembered that I had bought those candy bars for the s'mores, and so I ate one in about five seconds, and I didn't care. I didn't care that I was in this group. I didn't care that I was your coach, and I'm supposed to be leading you. I didn't care that I didn't need the candy bar. I didn't even try to limit myself. Um, and this morning, I ate, this morning, that's right, you heard me, in the morning, I ate another one. And... I threw away the wrappers so that Brian wouldn't see. I didn't even tell him I bought the candy bars. And I 100% planned on not saying anything to you guys either. But that is not how you grow. That's not how you learn how to make better choices. The whole point of these challenge groups is to help hold each other accountable. And what kind of coach and fellow challenger would I be if I wasn't 100% honest? So. I downed, wolfed down those candy bars both yesterday and today and just felt gross afterwards. Both my body felt gross and then I was just, it made me feel worse because I didn't need them. Um, they didn't even taste as good as they normally would or they used to. So it wasn't even that big of a reward. It was just a habit. I'm sad. I'm feeling like this and I want to eat chocolate because I deserve to. That's the thought. That's the line of thinking. And that's what we're trying to break. So I know I've given you guys suggestions on what to do instead. Um, and typically I try to do those. But yesterday and today I didn't even try. I was like, nope, I'm just, I'm going to eat this because I want to. 
making emotional decisions will always bite you. <laughs> and I'm not saying never have chocolate again, but if you're making a decision, I'm going to splurge today and have chocolate, what yesterday and today was, that wasn't a decision. That wasn't me saying I'm going to splurge. That was me purely emotional eating. Um, and so I just wanted to share that with you guys. That doesn't make me a failure. That doesn't derail my progress. I didn't lose all of the progress that I've made. Um, in fact, I probably won't even see a difference. I know I won't because I'm right back on track after it and I'm still doing my workouts. I'm still, well today I ended up being an impromptu rest day, but I'm still on track. So just like one healthy meal isn't going to fix your lifestyle, one splurge or one um, binge is not going to completely destroy you either. And so the key is instead of getting depressed and feeling like I'm never going to succeed now, I might as well just quit because what would that do for you? Instead of thinking those thoughts, the key is to get right back on track and say, yes, that happened. I made that choice, but all I can do is move forward and try to make better ones in the future. So, I hope you guys are all doing well. We're about to go into Memorial Day weekend, and I'm going to be giving you tips on how to survive the weekend with the cookouts and the parties and the out-to-eats and whatever it is that you have facing you. So, I hope you guys have a great night.